What is up guys? John here from flyatmikealf.com coming at you for another Two Minute Tuesday. We're going to work really hard to make this one two minutes. If we don't, well, it's because there's lots of valuable information and I mean, you can, you can spare an extra 30 seconds, can't you? All right, today we're going to talk about easy ways to fly precisely and not suck. Now, you may think that's a little harsh, but here's where I'm coming from. I fly with a lot of guys, private pilots, instrument, commercial, you know, they're working on an instrument, working on a commercial, they got a couple hundred hours, they fly kind of sloppy. They taxi, they wander around the center line, they don't fly coordinated in flight, they hold their altitude plus or minus 100 feet, but not very precisely when they got hundreds of hours of experience, if not over a thousand hours of experience, they easily could do that. Guys come in that are looking for CFI jobs and can barely hold a heading plus or minus 10 degrees, and you're going, you got all this time, you got the skill. I mean, some of these guys are CFIs and they can actually teach people how to do it better than they can do it themselves. So what's going on? Well, let me speak from experience here for a second, all right? When you go out and taxi the airplane, this is a great opportunity to hold the center line, hold that yellow line perfectly, which will in turn train you to A, hold center line on landing better, B, give you a great excuse when you clip the wingtip on something that, hey, I was on center line, that, you know, cone, that whatever that the survey engineer left out, that was not where it was supposed to be. Whereas if you're not on the yellow line and you clip your wingtip on a hanger, you're going to have a really hard time explaining that. So being on center line is great, kind of, hey, I'm on center line, it's not my fault. And, you know, I didn't mean to hit the wingtip of that other airplane that was parked in the wrong spot or taxied out past the line where he was supposed to be. If you're on center line, you got a good excuse, and also it really trains you to be precise. It's demanding 100% of your attention all the time rather than, hey, I landed, I'm taxiing back to the hangar, the flight's over, la di da, I'm just gonna zigzag around, get the airplane roughly to where it needs to be. Hey, I'm within a foot or two of center line, what's the big deal? No, put that nose wheel right on center line, put the center line between your legs, right on the center of you, not the center of the aircraft, otherwise you're gonna be offset, that's like an optical illusion. Why is this so important, especially taxing, right? Taxing out and taxing back in. Because we get sloppy with it, and we get sloppy with all of our flying. We pass a check ride. oh, I held altitude plus or minus 100 feet, I held my heading plus or minus 10 degrees for my hour and a half check ride. so now I'm good, now I can do that forever. No, you really can't. You start throwing that autopilot on, you start being a little sloppy, not really telling yourself even what altitude you're gonna fly, so you just kinda wander through, you know, plus or minus a couple hundred feet, because you're just cruising down the beach. You don't really care about your heading, because I'm, I'm flying that way, I'm just going that way, so why do I have to hold a heading? You know, I'm just gonna get the airplane in that general direction. That translates into just sloppy, poor piloting technique. Now, I'm not saying like there's anything wrong with it. You know, you wanna just go have a good time, more power to you. But then you come back for training or you come back to apply for a job or you come back to pass a check ride at a higher level and you're like, wow, why am I not this good? And, you know, I've got all this experience. Well, think about it, right? If you hand flew an airplane for two or three hours a day, every day without the autopilot, you'd probably get pretty good at it, especially if you held yourself to a high standard. Now, you drive your car down the interstate probably a half hour, hour, maybe even two hours a day, every single day. But nobody's got time for that or money for that to go practice that much flying every day. But you can hold your car in the center of the line really well. You can drive down that center of the lane without, you know, bumping other cars. Why can't we put our airplanes right in the center of the runway every time? Well, we don't get as much experience, plus we don't make the time we have in the airplane count because we're going up got our private pilot certificates, now we're gonna go fly with our buddy, fly with your mom, fly with your boyfriend, fly with your wife, whatever. Now you're not really holding yourself to that high standard, you're just going to have a good time. That translates into not practicing to a high standard every time. When you go out and fly, fly a heading on upwind, fly a heading on crosswind, fly a heading on downwind. Nail those headings every time. Nail the altitude, nail, even if it's just pattern work. Nail the headings on the pattern, nail the altitudes on the pattern, right on. Hold yourself to that high standard every time, Maybe it's a little more stressful, maybe it's a little bit more work. It's probably gonna be a little more tiring and that's how you know you're working and getting better as a pilot. I'm speaking from experience here because I went out and instructed for a couple thousand hours, sitting in the right seat, barely touching the flight controls, just kind of along for the ride, occasionally grabbing it right the last second before we wrecked the airplane on a touch and go or something. Now, not only was I trying to correct the student and get them better, and I was probably making students better than I was because I just wasn't practicing any of those skills. So then when I went, and you know, to fly along and I'd fly across country. I didn't really have an uh, altitude in my head or a heading in my head, I was just following a purple line. But then when I went to demonstrate it and somebody was watching me, I was like, wow, I'm terrible. Why am I so terrible? I got thousands of hours, I should be better than this. 
Well, yeah, because I wasn't practicing anything. So I had to go back out just by myself for a couple hours in a Champ or a Cessna 140 and really get that stick and rudder flying back and hold myself to an altitude, a heading, hold myself to that high standard, keep that ball in the center at all the times, not just, meh, the ball's off to the side a little bit. What do I care? I'm just cruising along here. Hold yourself to the high standard. It'll translate in your flying, make you a much better pilot. People will be a lot more impressed when they fly with you. And it'll make training for those other ratings, for the instrument, for the commercial, for the CFI, so much easier. And if you're already a CFI, hold yourself to that high standard. Go out and practice by yourself sometimes so you don't get unproficient on your stick and rudder skills. When you go to apply for the next job, it'll make it that much easier. People will be impressed with the way you fly. They won't think, this guy put 1,500 hours or 3,000 hours in his logbook. Really? Because you fly like you got a couple hundred, dude. What's what's going on? Hold yourself to the high standard. Don't get sloppy. Taxi on center line. Don't hit stuff. That'll really help. And as my old high school rowing coach used to say to me, John, less suck, more awesome. Same to you guys. I mean, not that you suck or anything, but I mean, it's easy for us to all kind of get into that sucky, you know, I just don't care phase anymore. So... Once again, we blew past two minutes, but you know, we're trying to help you guys pass check rides and just become better pilots. So, you know, forgive us, please. But if you guys want to learn more, go to flyatmikealpha.com. The link is in the description below. You can sign up for private pilot, instrument pilot, and commercial pilot ground schools. We guarantee you will pass your check ride when you take those courses. Plus, they're just really good educational courses, and there's a lot of stuff on there if you're already a pilot and you want to just enhance your skill, stay proficient, learn a little bit more about instrument flying or VFR flying. Just Make yourself better. Lots of awesome scenario-based courses on there. So check it out. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want a official response from one of our CFIs and not a troll response from one of the hundreds of trolls here on YouTube, you can go ahead and post your question at flyatmikealpha.com and one of our CFIs will respond to you. Just click ask a question right at the top of the page there. Until next time, guys, if you can't fly every day, fly8mikealpha.com. We will see you all in the next episode.